Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're on week two of a look at Galatians uh, chapter five. Last week, we focused in on the first part of that famous passage in Paul's letter to the Galatians. We started by focusing on the struggle going in our lives, our old nature versus our new nature, the ways of the flesh versus the ways of the spirit, our old sinful desiring character versus God, a God desiring character. One writer compared us to being like a cart tied to two donkeys and both donkeys determined to pull their cart away their way. And often it feels in life that we are being pulled one way and then the other. We could view this as two motivational systems, each with their own goals and aims, each battling for control over our lives. But as the followers of Jesus, with the very Spirit of God living in us, we should increasingly be pulled in the direction of the Spirit, the new nature having more and more of a pull over our lives, leaving behind the acts of the flesh. That's the aim. That's where we should be walking and moving towards. And God is patient and, and kind and uh, is gently working on us towards that end, aim. We then focused last week on a few aspects of the acts of the flesh. We looked at David's failure with Bathsheba. Even though he discovered forgiveness and peace with God, there were consequences that, that rumbled on in his family and the kingdom. We looked at Ahab and Jezebel, their envy, jealousy and selfish ambition leading to murder. We looked at the divisions in the Corinth church, how dangerous discord, factions and uncontrolled anger are in the church. Uh, this has been called to show unity. And just we reminded ourselves that those seeds that start in our lives must be dealt with before they're allowed to grow and fester and become some kind of act that causes problems and damage and harm. We're going to read Galatians 5, 16 to 25. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They're in conflict with each other, so you're not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And since we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit. Well, this week we're going to focus our attention on the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The Spirit longs to show us Christ Jesus and then to conform us to Christ. And these nine parts of the same fruit are all Christ-like characters. Any time spent in the Gospels, well, we'll see these evidenced. We see it in the life of Jesus. And the Spirit longs to form us into the people we're designed to be, Christ-like people. Now, why does Paul talk about fruit? Well, I guess we could think about that from a number of different angles. One question to ask is, how does fruit grow? Well, fruit grows slowly. If you've ever grown fruit and veg, and I'm sure we all have, well, you know it's a process. The fruits of the Spirit don't grow overnight. They too are a process. We work in partnership with the Spirit developing the fruit. The fruit of the Spirit has hidden roots. Much of what happens with our fruit or veg happens below the surface. We can't see what is going on. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, calls us to let our roots go down into the love of God so that we are rooted and established in that love. The fruit is the evidence of what kind of tree or bush we are. I know I've got an apple tree in the garden, not really by its trunk or leaves, but by the fruit it bears. Well, we're going to spend the rest of the week looking at the parts of the fruit. But as we start this week, let's examine ourselves. Are the fruit of the Spirit growing in our lives? Is there evidence of the fruit? And as we look at the nine parts of the fruit, are there some showing and others not? 
and are our roots strong, reaching deep into the love of Jesus? Are we spending time in our relationship with Jesus? Like that tree in Psalm 1, are we planted by good streams, our roots going deep down, drawing up the goodness of God's word, drawing up the goodness of a relationship with God through prayer, drawing up the goodness of God through our relationships with others so that we can be people who bear good fruit. Let me pray for us. Father, as we think about the fruit of the Spirit this week, we pray that you will speak to us, you will show us those things that we're struggling with and you will give us opportunity to evidence these fruits in our lives. Help our roots to go deep into you and may we help one another with that too. And may we be a church that helps and encourages deep roots going down into your love. Precious name we pray. Amen. Spirit restored